I'd like to talk about the Postgres internal SQL parser, and I will show you how to use Postgres internal parser in other applications. Uh, I'm Bo Pen, uh, I'm Chinese national based in Tokyo. Uh, I'm working for SRA OSS, and I have been using Postgres since 2016, and currently I focus on uh, open source software or technical support, like monitoring software, face clustering software, and also sometimes I do some construction work. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm also a PG pool developer. Uh, I joined PG pool de uh, development group. Uh, at the beginning, I did the Chinese documentation tr uh, translation, and since PG pool 3.0 fell, uh, I became the committer, and uh, uh, currently I'm in charge of the release management, bug fix, and the SQL parser part of PG pool. Uh, actually, by doing this parser work, I learned a lot about Postgres internal query processing. So today, I would like to share this uh, my experience with you, and I want to show you how to use Postgres parser in other applications. Okay, uh, in this presentation, uh, first I would, I would like to talk about the query processing structure in Postgres. Uh, I will show you how a query is processed in parser, analyzer, rewriter, planner, and executor. And then I will show you how to import the parser part to uh, other applications and um, use parser in other, other applications. Here I will uh, give you, uh, I will sh show you one of my, my experience uh, of using it in our application. Okay, let's get started with part one, uh, Postgres query processing. <coughs> As I mentioned, in Postgres query processing, uh, there are five parts. Uh, parser, analyzer, rewriter, planner, and executor. Uh, if a client, if a user send a query to Postgres server, and um, first the parser will check the query syntax and uh, generate a row pass tree. And the analyzer will add more detailed information to the row pass tree and uh, generate a query tree. Now, if the query is a utility command like create, drop, copy, uh, outer vacuum, and this query will be sent to execute it directly. Otherwise, this query will go through uh, rewriter, planner, and executor. And finally, executor will return, return the result to a client. Next, I will talk about each part of this query processing flow in detail. First, let's have a look at, at parser. Uh, parser checks the query syntax and uh, generate a low pass tree. Uh, you can find the source code of parser part in source backend parser directory. And um, parser is defined in two files, scan.l and gram.y. Scan.l is a definition of Lexa and the build using flex. Uh, gram.y is a definition of parser uh, built by using Bison. Scan.l is recognizing, uh, it's responsible for recognizing identity files and the SQL, SQL keywords. If a SQL keywords or identity files is found, uh, a token will be generated and the token will be returned to parser. Uh, please don't hear, uh, parser doesn't do any lookups in system catalog. So even if a user send a query uh, with a table name that doesn't exist, uh, they won't get any errors. Next, uh, here I will show you an example of, uh, of a simple select statement. And here we can see, um, oh, sorry. Here you can see an example statement. And here is a part of 
gram.yfl. As you can see here, this statement is a simple select statement. This will match this simple select. So a statement, select statement structure will be created. And then the target list, uh, target list from close where close will be set to this structure. And then this such kind of pass tree, low pass tree will be generated. As you can see in this low pass tree, uh, uh, in this tree at the top of this tree is the root node, it selects the statement. And under this root node, there are some child nodes like target list, from clothes, and the where clothes. And for debugging of some specific purpose, you may want to output such pass tree to your log file. Uh, as you know, uh, by turning on some, turning on some uh, config parameters, we can output uh, query tree, reactor tree, uh, or plan tree to log file, but we cannot output such low pass tree to our log file. So next, I will show you how to output this low pass tree to your log file. First, you need to uh, apply this patch to your source code. And the next, you, can, you need to turn on this debug print parser pa parameter. So then you can see such low pass tree can be printed out in your log file. Next, has, let's have a look at as analyzer. Uh, analyzer, um, as I mentioned, parser doesn't uh, do any lookups in system catalog, but an analyzer will access to system catalog and add <coughs> detailed information to low pass tree, uh, like table OID. Uh, column name, type, or operator OID. The output of um, the output of the analyzer is a query tree. You can find all the query tree node definitions in this parser node.h header file. Uh, I have talked about the low pass tree and uh, what a low pass tree and what a query tree. So to better understand the task of analyzer, here I will show you the difference between a pass tree and a query tree. I will use the same example query. As you can see, the low pass tree is generated in the left side of the slide. And analyzer will add detail from detailed information to the low pass tree and generate this query tree. Uh, in this query, in the target list, I used asterisk. Uh, as you can see in low pass tree, uh, the target list is A star. A star represents, uh, represents asterisk. Uh, analyzer will replace this asterisk uh, with column type and the column name. Here you can see the column name is C1 and the column type is 23. 23 means uh, int type. And also a uh, range table uh, is a list of relations. And analyzer added the table ID uh, to this query tree. So this is the difference between the low pass tree and the query tree. Uh, next, uh, I will talk about the re rewriter. Uh, rewriter takes the query tree from, an from analyzer and apply the rewriter rules to query tree, generate a rewritten query tree. If the query use a view, uh, so the rewriter will rewrite the re client query uh, to use the base tables given in the uh, view definition. Uh, actually, the executor can execute a query in many different ways, but uh, in many different ways, in many different plans. But in, and each of these plans will return the same result. But in which way the executor will e execute, should execute a query? So um, planner works between rewriter and executor. Planner uh, will choose the best, the optimal plan uh, and return its plan to executor. So planner first will planner will create all possible plans and estimate the plan 
uh, mis estimate the cost for each plan. Then planner will choose the lowest cost plan and return this plan to execute them. Here I see, uh, I said the all possible plans. What is all possible plans? And uh, for example, a plan tree with a sequential scan will be always created. And if a index is defined in a, it's defined, then a plan with uh, index scan will be generated. And with a query use, if a query use multiple tables and plan with different join algorithm will be created. As you know, the main join algorithm are nested loop, match join or hash join. So planner will return the best, the lowest cost plan uh, to execute. And so next the executor will execute the queries, uh, executor will step through the query tree, uh, through the plan tree, and retrieves the tuples in the way given by the plan tree. So finally, an executor will return the result to client. So I have talked, um, I have talked about the uh, query, uh, uh, the Postgres internal query processing, and I showed you how is a query processed in parser, analyzer, planner, uh, rewriter, planner, and executor. So next, uh, I would do to move to the next part. Uh, in this part, I will show you how to import this parser part uh, into an application and use it in an application. Here, you may be, you may be wondering why I have to use parser outside a Postgres server. Why I have to import the parser uh, to other applications? And just think about, you may want to achieve such, such functions like load balancing, or extract a table name or function name, or rewriting or modifying part of the query. For example, for uh, load balancing, uh, to accomplish load balancing, uh, we, need, we need to determine if the query is a read query or write query. Uh, because just um, only the read query can be sent to the standby node, and if the query is a write query, uh, it should be, it must be sent to the primary node only. But generally we pass to link, we may use regular expressions. But next, please, I will look at this such, this such query. I think it's a, it's a very complex query. If we're using regular expressions to pass this query, I think it's very, very hard. It's painful. So that's why we need Postgres parser. We need to use Postgres parser to process such complex, uh, complex query. Okay, in next part, I will show you how to import the parser to application. Yes? I have a question. Yeah? So if your uh, task is to determine if it's a read or write or something like that, then uh, what is it enough only to scan those L's and then only lector to determine what exactly is going on? Why do you need this whole thing? Why, do you need, why I need to determine it's a read query or read query. Oh, I mean, if you need only to know if this DBL or DML mm -hmm. statement, you can use only lector yes. to, to, to know the first command of the statement and then to decide what to do. But you are going to use the whole tree, you are using the, the, the whole parser. Why do you need this? I think next I will show you some, some reasons because the just for, for example, for select statement, but we cannot decide is a read a query or read query. Maybe uh, because we have some special case, or may, we may use function in your query. So. Yeah. 
I will continue my talk, sorry. <laughs> okay, next I will show you how to port the parser to application. And here I will use pgpool. Uh, use pgpool as a concrete example. As you know, pgpool is a database crossing software. Uh, pgpool provides, uh, provides the features like load balancing, connection pooling, automatic failover, uh, and replication. pgpool has import the Postgres parser. Uh, but why pgpool have imported the Postgres parser? Uh, there are several reasons. The first reason is to accurately pass the SQL queries. Um, for example, uh, in pgpool to accomplish load balancing, uh, pgpool need to determine if a query is a read query or a read query, and need to find the function name and the specific pattern from the query. Uh, as I mentioned, by using regular expressions to pass complex query, uh, to, comp to pass com complex SQL query, it's very, very painful, it's hard, very hard. So uh, pgpool has import parser, uh, Postgres parser, uh, to pass uh, SQL queries. The second reason is to rewrite the query. Um, in pgpool native replication mode, pgpool need to rewrite the date of time function to a timestamp const uh, for synchronizing the database node. So that's why pgpool have imported the Postgres parser. Next, I will show you how to import the parser in applications. Here you can see a list of files. This is a list of parser, parser files of Postgres. So it's, it's files, all the, all the required files. So we import all, all of the files into pgpool. And because some functions are called from these files, so we also import some utils files in pgpool. So by using this file, by using these files, we can generate a low pass tree. And we can, in our, in our application, we can uh, process by processing uh, the low pass tree to achieve, to accomplish some special, uh, specific features, specific, specific functions. And in the next slide, I will show you how to uh, process the low pass tree, and I will give you some examples. Uh, as you know, the low pass tree cannot be returned to the Postgres server. Uh, so um, after processing the low pass tree, uh, we need to convert the pass tree to a query string again, and send this query string to Postgres, to Postgres server. So for uh, converting the low pass, low pass tree to a query string, uh, we create two new files. This outfunks.she and the poolstring.she. And these two files are not included in Postgres. And in the next slide, I will show you some use case and some examples. So I, I will use this libsql parser.a. Uh, this is a static library uh, to show you how to process a low pass tree uh, in pgpool. And when you compile uh, pgpool source code, you can get this static, uh, static library uh, in Parser directory. So um, for show sure examples, I will use a test program and a link this test, test program to this static library. Okay, here um, in this part, I will show you three use cases. First, let's have a look at about the first one, find the read or write query. You can see here it's the main program, it's a test program. Uh, first, we pass the client query to this low parser function. As you know, this low parser function is imported from Postgres. And by using this function, we can get a list of low pass tree. So next, we pass the low pass tree to 
uh, send to where function. This is a function from PG, in PG pool. So this, this function is used to decide the load balancing destination node. So just let's have a look at uh, this function in detail. Uh, in this function, first, uh, the node type, we check the node type. The node type may be a select statement, a copy statement, transaction statement, uh, variable set statement. So for each, for each node type, the different program will be executed and return the load balancing destination node. And next, I will show you uh, three examples for select statement, copy statement, and a variable set statement, respectively. Uh, first, let's have a look at the first example, a uh, select statement. Uh, in this send to file function, uh, first, if the node type is select statement, and uh, this function will be called. And this, in this, this function is used to, but it, uh, normally we, we consider select statement is a read query. But there are some special cases, for example, for select for update or select into. And if a query contains a select for update, uh, for update or select into, uh, it should be a read query. So this query should be sent to primary node only. So here uh, we use this function uh, to check if the query contains um, four updated clause or into clause. As you can see in this uh, function, uh, the vocal function is called, uh, and this function is used to do a recursive work over the low pass tree. As I mentioned, the low pass tree is a tree with root node and several uh, child nodes. So this 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 work function uh, it's responsible to continue working uh, but on every child nodes and uh, to find if the query uh, to check if the query has a uh, four updated clause or into clause. Finally, this uh, function will return the uh, load balance distillation node. To, under, to better understand here, I will show you two examples to check if uh, the four update uh, clause appears in a selected statement, in a selected query. First, you can see is um, select four update. You can see in the result, uh, so we pass this query to the test program. You can see the result, it's considered as a red, red query. Next, uh, we use just a, a simple select statement. You can see the result is a read query. Okay, next I will show you the next uh, example, uh, copy statement. Uh, copy from statement is always a read query, but how about copy to statement? Actually, we can use um, subquery in copy to statement. If the subquery is a select statement, then the copy to query is a, it's a read query. If the subquery is a write query, then the copy to query is a write query. You can see in this send to query program, uh, if the copy statement is a uh, copy to statement, and if it has a, a subquery, and the subquery is a select statement, then it will re, uh, then it will be sent to the uh, load balance node. Uh, otherwise, it, it can be sent to the primary node only. And here I will show you examples to check if the copy, co copy query is a read query or write query. First, I will use a copy to uh, with a update statement. You can see in the result, uh, it's a write query. The next, I will show you a copy to statem statement with a select statement. 
you can see the result, it's a read query. It can be correctly uh, processed in PG pool. Next, I will show you the next example of a uh, set statement. Normally, we set uh, the set to statement to both of primary node and the load balancing node. But there are some special cases, just like, um, for example, uh, set, uh, uh, for example, uh, like set uh, transaction read only to off, or set isolation to serializable. Uh, this, this statement cannot be, cannot, uh, cannot be, uh, cannot be run in a standby node. It can be sent to primary node only. So in, let's, let's have a look at the send to where function. Uh, if a node is a variable set statement, and if the node name is a transaction only, or the value we set to off, then you can see the, this statement will be sent to primary node only. It cannot, because it cannot send to the standby node. If we send a standby node, it will, um, uh, an error will be returned. Next, I will show you some examples. Uh, first, uh, we just use a simple set to statement, set client encoding. And you can see this will be sent to primary node and um, the load balance node. Next, um, how about the trunk, uh, isolation level? Uh, as I mentioned, the serializable, we cannot re uh, execute it. We, we cannot execute the serializable in standby node. So you can see the result. Uh, this serializable isolation level uh, will be sent to primary node only. And if the uh, isolation level is repeatable read, uh, the results show us it will be sent to primary node and the load balance node. I have showed you the first uh, use case of find a query if a query is a read query or a read query. Um, but if a query uses a function, um, it's difficult to check the query is a read query or, or a write query because we don't know uh, what's the definition of the function. So uh, in PG pool, we need to find a function and extract the function name to determine if it's a read query or a write query. Here I will show you an example. And for example, in this example query, uh, I use two functions, sum function and the average function. Uh, I will pass this query to the test program. Mm, as you can see in the result, the function name is extracted. These two function name, average and the sum function, uh, are extracted and uh, we can Maybe we can compare to the write function list, or we can make a write function list and the, or read function list to compare the function, the function name. Okay, next I will show you the, the third use case. Uh, rewrite date and time functions. Why PG pool need to rewrite date function or Right uh, time function. Uh, because in PG pool native replication mode, uh, the, database re uh, the database replication doesn't rely on the Postgres streaming replication. So PG pool uh, replaced the uh, queries uh, to, for, uh, for synchronizing the backend nodes. Um, because, some, because some reasons, for example, because of the local time difference of each node or because of the query ex execution time difference. So um, the data inconsistency may occur. 
That's why PGPO need to rewrite date of time function into a timestamp constant. Uh, as you know, the date time functions are like current time, uh, current, time uh, current date of the current timestamp. Uh, how will PGPO uh, rewrite date of time function? First, uh, PGPO will convert uh, the time or date time function, uh, such as current time, current date, or current timestamp to to such can, to such format. Then PGPO will rewrite this format to a timestamp constant. Uh, here I will show you an example. For example, for current timestamp, uh, such uh, timestamp constant will be rewritten. Uh, to uh, rewrite the time of time or date function, uh, although here um, uh, a worker function will be called to do a recursive work over the low pass tree uh, to find if the low pass tree use a time function uh, and rewrite the time function. Uh, next, I will show you an example. Uh, as you can see in this example query, I use two function, no function and current date function. I just pass this query to uh, the program. Uh, you can see in the result, the no function and the current date function is written in timestamp constant. I have showed you uh, the three use case to explain how to use Postgres uh, parser in application and how to process the Postgres parser in application to do some, to achieve some features like load balancing or extract the data, uh, function name or table name or rewrite the time or date function. Uh, so next I will, I would like to uh, summarize my I would like to summarize my presentation. Uh, in, this presentation in this presentation, I have talked about the Postgres query processing flow, and I showed you how a query is processed in parser, analyzer, rewriter, planner, and executor. Then I showed you how to import the parser into an application and how to use, how to process the low pass tree in an application. And I hope uh, my talk and my expression can be helpful to people who try to use parser in application or who try to uh, pass the low pass tree in application. And for, for example, to achieve the features like load balancing, uh, retrieve part of RAM query or uh, rewrite query. And if you have interest, I have uploaded to the program today. I used the in this program. Uh, I used the in this presentation uh, and the library parser library uh, into uh, in the this GitHub page. If you have interest, you can download to use it and give some feedback or questions. Thank you very much. Thank you.